So welcome everyone if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching this directly on um, Twitch. Um, we were just having a discussion about coffee and coffee brands, so um, don't read the chat. There's a lot of people that are spewing their favorite coffee brands all over chat, but that's okay. Good, so like I said during the introduction, which wasn't recorded, or at least during waiting for the stream, is that today we will be talking about one of the subjects that I like the most. So we will be talking about QTL mapping, so quantitative trait locus mapping, and we will be talking about correlated trait locus mapping. No one ever heard about correlated trait locus mapping um, because correlated trait locus mapping is a method that I developed during my PhD. So I love talking about it, but it's not a very well used method or a very well known method for that fact because I'm very bad at marketing. Um, but anyway, that doesn't matter. So quantitative trait locus mapping is uh, a very common strategy, was developed in like the 1980s and it's the best way to associate um, phenotypic variation with um, regions of the genome. So let me show you guys the overview for today. So the overview for today is first I want to talk a little bit more about phenotypes and phenotypes in relationship to heritability, right? Because we already talked about phenotypes, we had a whole lecture about phenotypes, but I just wanted to recap some things and then talk about phenotypes and their heritability or their relationship to heritability. And then the next part will be um, quantitative trait locus mapping, so a QTL. Um, which is a region of the genome which is associated with a phenotype um, and besides that I want to introduce to you guys different crosses so different types of experimental crosses that you can make um, so that you can do QTL mapping. Um, we will talk about effect size, likelihood um, and of course if you talk about QTL mapping you always have to talk about genome-wide association as well because it's more or less the same thing. Um, but of course there are some differences, so during the lecture I will show you what the overlap between the two methods is and what the differences are. And then um, of course we will talk a little bit about fine mapping of QTL. Um, there will be a question for you guys in chat, so pay attention because there will be an impromptu question where I hope that you guys will answer me. Um, and of course after that I put a whole presentation about CTL mapping. Okay, so that is really annoying. OneDrive, why are you making sounds while I'm streaming? That should not happen. Anyway, um, so that's the overview for today. So I'm really excited, so let's just jump into it. And by jumping into it, I mean the answers to the previous assignments. Like last week, we had the whole R introduction lecture, um, and we didn't have time to do the answers to the previous assignments. And since I do want you guys to know what the answers are and how to solve them, um, let's go to the assignments. So these are not the previous assignments, but the, the previous, previous assignments. So the assignments for the uh, metabolites and pathway lecture. Good. So with that out of the way, let's jump into question number one. So I'm going to read question number one. So question number one is about using the Metlin database. So I actually scrambled this morning to get my password for the Metlin database reset. I sent two emails and fortunately people were awake and they answered me back and I actually got access to the database again. Otherwise I couldn't show you the answers, right? So let's um, switch to Firefox so that you guys can see the Metlin database. So when you log in, um, then it looks like this, right? So it's it, you need an account um, because it's a kind of, well, it's not a private database, but it's a database for academic use and use by companies. And of course, companies need to pay for it. But if you're an academic, um, you don't have to pay for it. You can use it for free. So the first question is, we have measured a compound in negative mode, which is a certain mode of the detector, so of the mass spec detector, and this compound has a mass over charge of 565.0518, and it was measured with a 15 ppm mass accuracy. Good. So now the question is, which compound was measured? Of course, this is only one of these peaks in a mass spectrum, right? So you have a mass spectrum, um, which goes from zero to all the way up to like a thousand, sometimes 1500, depending on how good your detector is. Um, and you get all of these peaks in these spectrums, right? So one of these peaks was found at uh, five, 
let me just copy it. So it's 565.0518 um, and it was measured at 15 ppm accuracy so let's change 30 to 15. It was measured in negative mode um, and then you get all of these adducts. Um, I didn't mention the adducts or the peptides or stuff so we're just going to keep that on um, the default and then we're just going to go and say search. We have detected a nominal behavior from this IP user ID and have temporarily blocked access from some period of time. Access to this page will resume shortly. Like I said, I scrambled this morning to get my account unblocked and apparently they did allow me now to log in, but they did block my IP address. Yeah, like big woohoo got blocked from the servers that I wanted you guys to use and wanted you guys to see. Um, yeah, I know what the general restrictions are. Um, all right, I will send them another email. VPN. Um, if I start my VPN here, um, then, well, it's not so much an unexpected event because I did reset my password twice this morning and then started emailing them saying that, well, you sent me a temporary new password, but every time I try to log in, it doesn't work. And I got a mail back saying that, well, if you just copy paste the password that's in the email, it actually adds two spaces in the front. And I was like, why would you do that? <laughs> so that was the kind of issue that I had, um, but we figured it out, but apparently I reset my password like one too many times. All right, so let's forget about the Mac, uh, Metlin um, for now. I, I will try it again, and otherwise we just put it on the schedule for next week. Th this is so silly. All right, so the next question was also about Metlin, so we can't do that one um, either. Um, but the next question is then about the Kyoto Encyclopedy of Genomes. Um, so let's go to CAG. Um, that's not what I wanted. I did want to get the um, location of the database. And fortunately on CAG you don't have to log in. So you can still get blocked of course, right? If you do automatic spidering of these things then yeah, they generally don't like that. Um, but uh, yeah. Actually was anyone able to do the Metlin um, exercise? Um, because I will put the answers to the assignments online so then you guys can see which compound we were looking for. Um, but I was just wondering if anyone was able to make an account, log in, not get their IP address blocked, and in the meantime was able to search for peaks in a mass spectrum. All right, so CAG is more or less structured like a book in a library, right? They use kind of the Dewey Decimal System in a way, um, at least when you look at the map pathways. Um, so, um, so the first question was, what is the CAG identifier for photosynthesis pathway? Um, so the easiest way is just to say, go to pathways, right? And then here you have the um, metabolism overview, um, but here they have a list of all of them, right? So there's a lot of different pathways that they have. So let's just find on page and photosynthesis, photosynthesis. So the photosynthesis pathway is actually called M, uh, MAP00195. Right, so that's just the number that they assign to the photosynthesis pathway. Uh, we can click on it um, and then we can see the pathway in CAG um, and it looks like this. So let me zoom out a little bit so that it fits on the screen. Um, so of course the photosynthesis pathway is taking place in the uh, um, in the chlorophyll of uh, plant cells. Um, so and of course it has different uh, different um, different protein complexes and these protein complexes together um, generate energy from sunlight. Um, so if we look at the photosynthesis pathway, we can see the reference pathway, how many species will not encode the, uh, however many species will not encode the entire pathway. Which proteins are missing in the photosynthesis pathway of Arbitopsis thaliana? Uh, right, so this is the whole um, photosynthesis pathway, right? So we see all of the different genes or different proteins of which these different complexes are made up. Um, so now when we want to show the photosynthesis pathway for a certain animal, right, then um, we can go and say um, change pathway type, which opens up a pop-up. Unfortunately that you can see because it doesn't capture the pop-up. Uh, when, but when you click the button here, right, um, change pathway type, 
it says open a new window um, so it opens up a little window and then you just get a list of all of the different species that are in CAG right so if we look at the list the first one is the reference pathway um, and then the second one on the list is actually Arabidopsis thaliana that we're interested in so when I click Arabidopsis thaliana it um, reloads the pathway and now you can see that all of these little boxes have a green color when the gene is found in Arabidopsis thaliana and you see that some of them are not there right because they 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 are not not every protein is needed to build these complexes um, so hey, of course we can now see that uh, PSBU, PSBV, PSBX these are three proteins which generally are considered part of this pathway and are more or less well not necessary for the function but they, they have some function in the uh, pathway or in the photosynthesis pathway um, but Arabidopsis thaliana so this little plant which is called tail crest um, it does not encode them um, so which proteins are missing? Um, so let me show you guys the answers that I had, um, just so that you can see it. Um, so here, missing in Arabidopsis thaliana were PSBU, PSBV, PSBX, and a couple of other ones. Um, so this allows you to reason about will it be able to do photosynthesis or not. Of course, Arabidopsis is a plant, so it can do photosynthesis. So what we can learn from this is that these proteins are not necessary to do photosynthesis. They are probably there to either um, enhance photosynthesis or they are there to um, to kind of fulfill the role when another protein is missing. Right? So they, at a lot of these pathways, of course, they have backups built into the pathway. All right, so now the next question was, uh, go back to the reference pathway for photosynthesis. All right, we can do that. That's just clicking the back button. Um, and then if we click on the cytochrome complex, 1.10.9.1. So um, let me look for that, 1.10.9.1. Uh, 1.10.9.1, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Uh, cytochrome complex, let me just search for that cytochrome complex where are you because you should be in here photosystem 2 cytochrome complex so it actually got a new number again that is really annoying uh -huh. so let me click on that so photosynthesis so what did I so why did it change the number again huh interesting it happens sometimes, right? So sometimes like the Dewey Decimal System that they use gets updated. Um, but this is indeed the cytochrome. Oh, this is just one of the subunits, not the whole thing. Um, so where's the whole thing then? Cytochrome pathway, cytochrome complex. Oh, that should be okay. All right, so it did, it did change the number, um, which happens from time to time. Um, so now the question was, let me look at the question again. Um, so if we click on the cytochrome complex, we can see which reaction takes, uh, which reaction it takes part in or catalyzes. So what is this reaction, right? So when we scroll all the way down, we see that we have the name of this enzyme is called plastoquinol. Um, and then if we scroll down further, it should show us the, um, let me see. So here you see the reaction. Right, so the reaction is also in CAG, you can click on it. Um, so if you click on reaction, um, then you see actually what it does. Right, so you see here the uh, metabolite that is the input of this um, complex and then the one which is the output. Right, so this is the iron subunit. So what it does, it says that um, the reaction that it does, it takes plastoquinol plus two oxidized plastocyanide, two hydrogen atom, or two hydrogen or less positively charged hydrogens, and then it makes plastoquione, right? So that's what it does. So um, let me show Guys, if you're looking, if, if I'm saying that look here, um, then if you're looking at the notepad window, do say like, dude, um, we're looking at the wrong screen um, because I'm not watching the stream all of the time. So I'm just clicking on the thing. So let me do that again for you guys, right? So here we have the complex. Uh, unfortunately, the number has changed, so it's not 10 point something anymore, um, but it's still called the cytochrome complex. So if we click on the cytochrome complex, right, we see more information about this complex. Um, 
if we then scroll down right then we see the enzyme right so all of these different proteins together form a single enzyme and then we can just click here on the reaction so when we click on the reaction it gives us the reaction so it gives us the input and then it gives us the output metabolite right and of course um, it uses some of some other things as well right so you can see here that the equation is um, c16693 which stands for plastoquinol um, two times this oxidized plastocyanide and then two times a standard positively charged hydrogen atom um, and then it creates plastoquione which has this structural formula plus two times the reduced plastocyanide and in total this now gives you four positively charged hydrogens right so um, if we see um, in the answers so that's kind of what I wrote down so the re reaction that is, is um, that is catalyzed by this com uh, by this protein complex is going from plastoquinol to plastoquinone and it just has this formula right so and every enzyme in CAG has this information so if you want to know I have this certain protein um, which catalyzes a certain process what are the input what are the outputs then all of these things you can track down in CAG hey, and of course this is really useful especially if in the future you need to do something like bacterial manipulation right so if you have a certain bacteria like an E. coli bacteria and you want to have this E. coli bacteria produce cocaine for you or some other substance that you might be interested in then you can use CAG to figure out what the closest compound is to the compound that you want to produce and then you just look at the coca plant see which enzymes they use take those enzymes put them on a little vector and then put the vectors into your bacteria and then ta-da you have a bacteria like an E. coli bacteria which can make cocaine for you right so that is the usefulness of CAG it allows you to reason on how to make or how to use a biological symptom uh, system to make a certain substance so not saying that you should make bacteria or plants or other things that make cocaine or other drugs I'm just saying that if you want to you can use CAC to do this right so you can just see what is the closest substance that this animal can make and then which proteins do I need to give to the animal to build up the pathway leading to whatever you want to make right and this is the same thing that people do when they make um, these big bioreactors and they say well we want to make this substance it's really hard to make chemically so we are going to use bacteria or other animals to make these substances all right so next question um, so go back to the reference or that we are uh, Clicking on the reaction itself will bring up the chemical formula um, and that, that's what we did, right? So the chemical formula, um, let me switch back to Firefox, this is the chemical formula that it catalyzes, so relatively easy to figure out. Alright, so then the next question was, um, if we navigate to the tryptophan biosynthesis pathway in mouse, okay, so when you look at this pathway, can you tell if a mouse is able to create tryptophan? So let's just go all the way back to CAC, right? Um, so go to CAC, then we go to pathways, um, then we search for tryptophan. So we go to tryptophan metabolism. Um, hey, of course, this is a massive, massive pathway, right? There's, there's literally almost a hundred um, different proteins in here, which all kinds of different reactions. Um, so we want to create tryptophan itself. And I think, unfortunately, we cannot just search in here because this is just a picture, right? Um, so we have to find tryptophan, but fortunately I looked at it before, so here is tryptophan, right? So to create tryptophan, there is only kind of one way of creating tryptophan, and that is um, following the arrows. Um, we have the arrow, which is tryptophan biosynthesis, which then leads to here, which is L-tryptophan, um, which can then be transformed into tryptophan. I don't if I click on here I should be able to see okay so this is just tryptophan so we want to go to the tryptophan biosynthesis right because we want to know if we can synthesize it so here tryptophan should be um, one of the um, outputs um, so the outputs are generally in these round boxes where you go to another one uh, so let me see I looked up tryptophan in the previous one but here Ah, here, L-tryptophan, right? So L-tryptophan can be made from indole, 
or it can be made from 3 indole glycerol phosphate, um, right? Because these have arrows, so this protein is able to go and take indole and make L-tryptophan. This one actually is a, is a reaction which goes both ways. So it's a, it's a chemical reaction which is in, in, in balance, and this enzyme can be used um, to steer the reaction one way or the other. Okay, so let's look at mouse, right? So I'm just going to click the change pathway type again, and then I'm going to select mouse, which is called mus musculus, um, and here. So if we click on mus musculus, we see that there's only a couple of enzymes that are encoded in mice. So this means that a mouse is definitely not able to synthesize L-tryptophan, right? Because it, it, it doesn't have these two enzymes. So the question was, can a mouse synthesize tryptophan? No, a mouse cannot synthesize its own tryptophan. Next question, how about soybeans? Can soybeans make their own tryptophan? So hey, again, we go up, we say change pathway types. Um, then we go to soybean. So let me just search for that. Um, so soybean actually is called Glycine Max. And that's the official. Um, and here we see that soybeans have these two enzymes, right? And they also have the other enzymes in the pathway. So probably soybeans can make tryptophan. So hey, imagine that I'm a tryptophan dealer and I want to search for the best animal um, to make tryptophan for me. Um, then mice are not a good option. Soybeans are. So soybeans can make my, my tryptophan. Um, the question was, uh, the next question is, and when we look at Enterococcus faecalis, which is a bacteria which comes from human poop, and then it's V583, right? So it's a very specific type of bacteria, and that's the nice thing about CAG, because CAG doesn't just have Enterococcus faecalis in there, no, it also has a whole bunch of genetically modified organisms in there, right? So Enterococcus faecalis V583 is a very, is a, is a, type of Enterococcus faecalis, which has been genetically modified uh, to create some, um, some substance. So the question is, if I can find that easily, because of course there's literally hundreds of bacteria in there. Um, Enterococcus. So I'm just looking through the whole list of, uh, so those are Staphylococci, uh, da -da -da, Bacillus, uh, Enterococcus, where are you? Um, I'm just going to search for V583. That seems to be the one that is probably there. All right, so if we switch the pathway, so I just click the button right, it reloads the pathway. Then you can see that this Enterococcus faecalis, V583, uh, is having a lot of the pathway encoded. It just misses some of them, right? So again, this animal this, this um, bacteria is probably not able to make L-tryptophan, but you see that if we add one, two, three, four, five proteins, it should be able to make it, right? So if we just take these five proteins, we encode them on a bacterial vector, trans transform this little vector into the bacteria, then we could make a bacteria which makes tryptophan. Good, so let me see. Um, what the answers were. Let me see. And switch you guys there. Right, so the tryptophan biosynthesis, mouse can most definitely not make it. Right, so glycine max, so soybeans are very probable. So I'm, I'm never answering yes, right? Because like I'm not a biochemist, so hey, I'm not going to say soybeans make tryptophan. Um, but um, hey, here the answer is yes, they most probably will be able to synthesize tryptophan. Yeah, because you never know if anything upstream of the process is missing or not. Um, but at least hey, it contains all of the um, enzymes to make um, tryptophan from indole. Good. And then uh, Enterococcus, um, also probably not. At least not if, it had, but by adding eight um, eight uh, enzymes to this bacteria, we could have a bac uh, we could make a bacteria which which encodes this. Huge, Testosaurus redeemed digital sketch. All right, a puffer fish. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, sure, we we'll, we will do a puffer fish. 
Uh, do you mind if we first finish the assignment? Then uh, after that we will make you a nice, nice drawing. You just have too many points. <laughs> All right. Thanks for giving me some time. All right. So um, let me see the next question. Right. So let's go back to CAG. Um, next question is um, navigate to the biosynthesis of plant secondary metabolites. Um, so let's go to the main page. We can go to CAG again. Uh, we can go to pathways and then I'm just going to search for secondary. That might be the best. Um, no, that's other. So biosynthesis of secondary metabolite. No, it's biosynthesis of plant secondary metabolites. Uh, biosynthesis of various, various, various plant secondary metabolites. So there it is, right? So and just looking at it. So again, you can see that this is like a massive, massive pathway, right? Right. There's literally like hundreds and hundreds of enzymes, and and the nice thing about this pathway is actually that all of the structural formulas are here, um, because they are really um, important when you look at secondary metabolites. Okay, so now the question was, from which substrate is flavanol produced? So again, we have to kind of play this game of search where it is. I think I know where it should be because I'm actually pretty familiar with this pathway because I did study it in the past. So here we have valine, alanine, pyruvat, da, 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 da. Uh, flavanol. I hate this. I hate this. I hate searching for these things because they're so big that I looked at it this morning quickly. So this is the indolate glucosinolate from tryptophan. I think it should be in this part of the pathway. On the bottom left, I saw it. All right, so left, bottom left. Yeah, flavanol. All right. Good. So we then have the answer also because here we see flavanol, right? And flavanol is produced from flavanon. Econ. Thank you. Yeah, on the left side. Yeah, found it. So here flavanone is transformed into flavanol. And flavanols are actually very important. So um, in plants you have something called uh, 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 flavonoids. And flavonoids are these uh, little substances which are um, in like plants and they are very good for your health and other they have all kinds of other medicinal uh, medicinal properties um, so um, there's like hundreds of thousands of these compounds but they all are created first by making the flavanol and then flavanol is then transformed into all kinds of other substances so there are all these like flat surfaces which function as a kind of molecular key all right, so now the question is, is download and save the citrate cycle pathway in humans and save it as a key GML file so that we can use it later in Cytoscape. So actually, I tried to do the live demo at the end, right? Um, like two weeks ago and I failed horribly, but I found actually that I just had a too old version of Keg installed to do what I want. Um, so citrate cycle pathway. So we just again go to pathways. We search for the word citrate, citrate cycle. And then here we have the pathway, right? And then we can actually say that we want to download the pathway. So downloading the pathway should be um, mm -hmm, pathway entry. And then uh, here's the map. Here's the ortholog table. And then we can actually export it as well. Where was the export button? Pathway menu. Uh, yeah, that's what we are. So that's the citric cycle. Uh, show description. Hey, where did the download button go? So we can highlight all of them. Why is there no download button anymore? I hate that they change the website every year. Uh, there used to be just a button here at the top which says um, download pathway. Let me actually open up the help file. Pathway um, download. Uh, it's so horrible. They actually removed this whole thing. No, oh, that's such a shame. That is such a shame. This is the pathway, right? Yeah, and then the pathway entry. 
Can I not just download the whole thing? He used to be able to have like a single button download. Oh, that's the dbget. Of course we can use dbget to get it, but we don't want that. We just want to have the... Let me search if they actually uh, removed it. Download keg. Yeah, so it should still be there. Markup file is an extension, blah, blah, blah. Um, Ah, okay, so we have to use not the map, but we have to do the KO entries. So we go back here to the pathway that we were interested in, and then we go to pathway menu. Oh, yeah, so that's the one that we want. We want to have this one. We go to change pathway types. Um, then we have to go to the KO. And now it should have a download option. Right, so um, unfortunately you guys can't see that, but when you change, um, let me actually capture you guys that screen once, um, just so that you guys can uh, see the uh, window capture, alright, that's the window that I want to capture. So the, the pop-up looks like this, right? So you have just the uh, the map, which is the reference pathway, then you have the, uh, uh, the reference pathway when you have the CAG only, um, then you have the EC only and then the reaction only. So hey, they are three different ways of looking at the pathway. Um, but in this case, I just clicked on the KO, right? And when I click on KO, uh, then it does allow me to download the, the K, uh, KML file. Good. So here we say download KGML. And then we say save file. And we're just going to save this for later. All right. So that was the trick. So the trick is to click on the change pathway type and go from the um, kind of map pathway, which is the more or less default pathway to the other one. Um, okay, so the next question is about a reactome. So let me open up a reactome. Good, so it's always good to search, right? Like Google skills are very, very important. Oh, that looks a little bit weird. Um, so Google skills are very important in bioinformatics. Like Googling stuff is like, well, it's important. Like in any field, I think that it makes sense to be able to <laughs> to, to, to figure out. If you don't know something, just throw it in Google and Google will tell you what you should do. Um, ah, haha, let me, let me show you guys the answer. Download it. Trick is select either key, KO, EC or reaction. So I did put the little trick in here. So, um, yeah, so for the CAC pathway. Good. So let's go back to Firefox. So this is the Reactome database, very similar to CAG. It's just more high level, right? So CAG really is metabolite, enzyme, other metabolite. But Reactome has a much higher view. So a pathway in Reactome can, for example, be um, DNA replication. Right, DNA replication, of course, involves like very big enzymes, um, which are made out of hundreds and hundreds of different proteins. Um, and then, of course, it's not as clear that you have metabolite protein and then the output metabolite. All right, so let me read you guys the question, if I can find the window. Actually, I can't, but that's... Okay, first get familiar with the structure, click on a couple of pathways and observe that you can drill down on a pathway by opening up different pathways which show subnetworks in more details. All right, so let's just look at the citric cycle pathway, right? Because the, the same pathway that we have here um, should also be in Reactome. Um, so let's just go to Reactome and look at the citric pathway, right? So we have citrate which can head, so there's three reactions in total. Um, so we can just click on one and then it opens up this, well, that's not the best pathway to start off with. Um, so this is a very, very small pathway. So let's say DNA replication, right? So to have a bigger pathway. Okay, so here there's two pathways. So if we click around, we click on the DNA, DNA replication pathway, right? Then you can see here a picture of the pathway. Um, and if we click on it here, on the image, then it actually opens up in the pathway browser. And so here you see that and it starts zooming in already. So here we have the pathway that we were just looking at. And of course, this is only a sub pathway of a much, much bigger structure, 
right? So what CAC tries to do, um, if we then zoom in a little bit, right, um, then we can see that there's different complexes, there's different proteins which are involved, right? So you see here that uh, ORC1 binds and then you have the ORC thing and then that that binds CD, CDC6 and CDT1, right? So it gives you the whole kind of DNA replication cycle um, which goes round and round and round, right? So if we then are interested in some of the sub pathways and then we can actually just click on them and then hey, it goes into this little sub pathway which is again the assembly of the repl uh, pre-replicative complex and then you have the activation of the complex right so it it does have the same level of detail as CAG if you drill down enough um, so let's just um, double click here right so to zoom in a little bit on this part of the pathway right so you see that in this case these two pathways are kind of overlapping so you have the assembly and then the activation and the whole thing is called um, the replication pre initiation complex right and again if we really want to know more about it we can actually click on these links and we get a, a summary and also here on the side you see that actually sub pathways start opening up um, where you get more information so again, a very, very useful database. All right, so um, click the search icon. Um, here you can input your own genes of interest, search for uh, HLA and pro project it on the different networks. In which pathway is COX-15 COX active? All right, so um, let's go back to Reactome. Um, here we have the search thing, right? And we search for HLA. We say go, so we have HALA, HALA class 1, class 2, so we just click the first one, just to make sure. And then it is located here, and we want to look at one of the pathways, right? Um, it zooms in a lot, and then we are here. So, the question was, in which pathway is COX-15 active? So why didn't I just search for COX-15 then? That makes more sense to me actually. Um, where is the search button here? Church, 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 church. I'm, I'm having the feeling that I'm not seeing the whole thing because I've, I've, I've got it in a little squidgy screen. Um, so let's go back to Reactome and just search for COX-15. Right, that's probably so. Cox15 is a protein, um, and then here yeah, we learn that it's located in the mitochondrial and the inner membrane. At least it is in humans. Um, and then if we look at the pathway, so the question was in which pathway is Cox15 active? Um, so Cox15 is active in the metabolism of polyprotins, heme biosynthesis, and then then you have the the transformation. Right? Um, can we actually? go to this pathway or can we not so we could only can we zoom in on the All right let's load the pathway browser I like the fact that it's just coming at you um, so here we see the COX-15 gene and this is um, involved in the biosynthesis so what it does it makes from heme O it makes heme A Right? And if you want more information about what COX-15 actually does, hey, you see here a whole description. Um, hey, besides that, you can also see if hey, the same thing as in CAG. Oh, you guys can see that. But if you click the button here, it opens up all of the different species. So again, just like in CAG, it allows you to reason if a certain species is able to do it or not. Um, but hey, if we just go back and we hey, we just say the COX-15, then actually the pathway in which it is um, located is in the heme biosynthesis pathway, which is the uh, one of the pathways which is um, responsible for synthesizing the heme protein. Of course, the heme protein is one of the main proteins in, in hemoglobin. Um, so it's the one that is able to catch oxygen using um, iron atoms. And of course, hey, you could figure that out by just looking at the gene and looking at the pathway and reading the descriptions in the pathway. Good. Next question. So question for Reactome is um, in which pathway is it active? Well, it's active in the heme biosynthesis. All right, so download and install Cytoscape. I hope everyone was able to do that. I also did that. So I also have Cytoscape open at the moment. Um, let me actually capture that window. No, I want to capture Cytoscape. All right, there's Cytoscape. 
make it visible, get rid of Firefox, get rid of Notepad++, uh, move it a little bit bigger so that you guys can actually see what's happening a little bit more and then I'm making it a little bit more so that it feels good right okay so first things first um, so the question was um, find the app that will allow you to load CAG files and install it then load the Citrate Assel cycle pathway that you downloaded from CAG into um, Cytoscape so Cytoscape has kind of an app plugin system right where you can use multiple apps so when we go to the app manager a window opens up which I probably can show you guys window capture see if it captures the right one yeah so it's this one so right this is the pop-up window that opens and then hey you can see that it has actually an app store where you can download all kinds of plugins for Cytoscape um, I have nothing installed because I just installed it um, but of course I can just search and I can search for CAG right because that's the one that I wanted to load um, why is all of these empty yeah Currently installed, check for updates, that's also fine. Oh crap. I am using a slightly out of date version. So it 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 doesn't have the app store anymore. Um I did install a newer version of Cytoscape though today. So I installed which version am I using currently? I'm currently using 3.4. That's not what I want. I want to use the 3.9. Uh, set escape. Where are you? Okay, set escape 3.9. So let me just close the old version and that's also one of the things that went wrong last time when I wanted to do a live demo. Um, so starting up. takes a little while. It's a Java program. Java can be really slow in that sense um, for starting up. But once it's started up, it's fast enough. Righty then, there we are. Uh, I don't want to do that. Like, just go to App Manager, right? So now, okay, so let's close that one, close that one, um, do properties, and then all right, so now when I look at the app manager in Cytoscape, it looks like this, and now I actually have all of the apps that I can search for, right? Because a lot of people are there um, making plugins for Cytoscape. Um, so I just want to search, I want to search for CAG, um, and then you have here Cytocag or CAGscape. Um, so find CAG pathways. No, I just want a file reader and pathway visualizer for CAG XML files, right? Because in CAG, we downloaded one of these CAG XML files. So I'm just going to install this one. Um, takes a little while but it's generally small right so all right very good so it's installed then let me actually capture the main window from Cytoscape and when I open up the new version it kind of looks like this um, it falls on top of me which is not the best thing in the world but it's also not the worst thing in the world um, so here we see the uh, Cytoscape right so we just installed the plugin so now when I go to apps um, I have an uh, I have a KML reader, so I should be able to now import my network. So let me see where's the uh, currently installed app description not found. That's fine. So where's my Cagscape app? Cagscape app. I should have installed this beforehand, but um, let me just try to open it up. It might be that the plugin just detects it. So I'm just going to say file open and then I'm going to go to downloads um, because that's where I save the KML file. So let me see the file. Where are you? Why is this not sorting it in a normal way? I hate Java. Java programs have such a weird way of showing files and folders. So sort by date modified. Go all the way up. 
right, open up. Has the wrong extension. I already thought that. Where is my uh, KML KML app? Let me actually restart it to see if it actually. I know there's a whole bunch of updates. That's not the issue. So where did the app go? Because generally when you do apps, then when you install an app, when you click on the app button, it has just an additional, um, an additional. So let me see if there's another CAC reader. Yeah, no, Saito CAC. Yeah, so why? Okay, so I, I need to re restall Cytoscape after installing it. So let me close Cytoscape and then restart it just so that it activates the app. It's something that they actually could have mentioned in the like help file. All right, so let's open up the right Cytoscape this time. All right, starting up again. Ah, uh, this might be also the issue. All right, so the app that I downloaded is for Cytoscape 3.8. And I have Cytoscape 3.9 installed, and I have Cytoscape 3.4 installed. So this is not going to work. So the app just doesn't work under the version that I have installed. Why is that? Why is that? Why, why does it not? Why, why computer, why can't you just work with me a little bit? Work with me a little bit. All right. So forget about the CAC pathway loading. Um, let me actually remove this one and then say properties and do the just cancel this one. All right. So good. Then close it. All right. So that's a shame, but you can use the app plugin, but you have to install the right version because that's the version of the app. It's not compatible with the version of Cytoscape that I'm currently in, that I have installed. And of course, if you use a version which is too old, the App Store is not even available. Um, okay, so says Cytoscape 3.8 or later. Yeah, here it says like works with Cytoscape 3.8, which should mean that it actually works with 3.9 as well. Um, but like, let me show you the the window that I'm looking at. So here I'm looking at Cacscape, right? So and here it says works with Cytoscape. 3.8. Um, it's actually very recently released, um, but it it just it just doesn't seem to do what I what I what I want. Because generally you go to the app, right, and then for each app that you have installed, you have just a, a, a button that you can click, which opens up the import window. Um, so for some reason, I don't understand why this doesn't work with my version of Cytoscape then. Let me see, Cytoscape 3.9, because it should work with 3.9, right? That's also the way that that I actually expected it to work, because there was an older version for 3.4, um, but I can't install that anymore because they took offline the whole App Store for 3.4. All right, so I'm starting up Cytoscape again. So just the 3.9 version so that we can actually try this once again, see if a reboot of Cytoscape actually makes the app work. Um, uh, All right, oh, well, let me actually capture the window for you guys. So there it is again, again, too big doesn't remember the size that I actually gave it. So let's just puzzle around, right? Good, so now we go to apps, app manager, currently installed, Cacscape 0.9.1, app 
app description not found. So it does give me an error in the uh, in the app window. So just for for you guys, if I go to apps, app manager, um, let me capture that one. Right then, if uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. Right, so when I go here, right, then it says that I have currently installed the Kexcape. But then when I click on it, it says that the app description not found. So it, it seems to not work that well with the version of Cytoscape that I'm using. Um, let me see if I can just file open up because it might be that it's smart and that it just integrated with the open button instead of having the uh, downloads, do a list of details, sort by last modified, open up the XML file and it still says wrong extension. And I can't go to, to apps because when I click apps, I, I don't get the one that I want. Anyway, not too important. So probably I just need to downgrade my Cytoscape to 3.8 and then it should work because it, it seems to be just a little bit of an issue with the, uh, um, with the version that I'm using. So it seems to be a version conflict. Um, like last time, right? Like last time we also had this little issue with uh, with Cytoscape because I was using an older version which didn't load in the file type that I wanted. Okay, but now what we did want to do is we want to create our own pathway, right? So let me show you Notepad, right? Um, and don't show you this one. Don't show you guys the Firefox and um, open up Notepad++. Right, so here are my answers. So here we made, uh, we want to make our own little pathway, right? Because it has this very flexible network definition. Um, so last time that we tried this, we wanted to say something like Oscar loves food. Um, Danny loves Oscar, um, right? And then we want to say something like um, Danny loves Anna, and then we can have different types of interactions as well. So we can then say, for example, Oscar um, hates water, right? Because he's a cat, so he doesn't like water. And then we can say water is wet, right? So it's just a three column structure. Um, so we can save it. And I'm just going to save this as um, on my D drive and I'm just going to say small network.txt. Good. So now let's open up Cytoscape and let's open up the version that I know I can use because I tried it this morning. Um, so that was actually um, this one, I think, which is 3.6.1. By now I have like five different versions of Cytoscape installed. <laughs> which is not the correct way of doing it but the, it's a really useful tool it's just that it's very finicky sometimes with the formats that it supports or the apps that are available um, all right so it's booting up um, and then once it's booted up i will show you guys the site escape window and then we will try and go and load this little network that i made And it's waiting, it's waiting, it's waiting, waiting, waiting. Like I could do the drawing in the meantime while we're actually waiting for Cytoscape to boot up. So it's actually stuck here. <laughs> I hate Java programs, right? Just like, yeah, yeah, I know that there's some problem with this plugin that you have, Cytoscape. Stop bothering me with it. All right, good. A newer version of Cytoscape is available. No, screw you guys. Like I just installed that version and it didn't work either. All right, window capture two, properties, capture the Cytoscape session. All right, so now it even opened up much wider, so I'm totally gone. All right, so we made this little network, right? So we have the network where we have different types um, and we just wanna um, go through it, right? So let me close the welcome. So we have no networks um, and now we see that we have the network, the style panel, right? Which I was was struggling with last time um, that the style panel actually did not um, show me or show you guys or did not allow me to show you guys what I wanted to show you guys. So let me actually put it up better so you can see the whole window 
so that you can guys can see what I'm looking at. All right, so now first things first, we want to say import the network, right? So we go file, import, network, file. File, import, no, we go file, import, table, file. Right, so and then we say our file, which is on the D drive, go to details, sort by last modified, and then here we have my small network. So if I do this, right, then I think the window capture should capture that. Let me see if that works. That's just black. Ah, come on, computer, don't make it so difficult. All right, so then it looks like this, right? So here's the import window that I'm seeing, right? So, and then when I do this, I can now say, okay, so this is my, um, um, my little file that I created, right? So the first thing that I do is I go to advanced option and say I separated things by spaces, right? So now um, I also can go to advanced options and sa say I do not have any column names, right? So I just say column one, column two, column three, right? So now we go to column one and then we say that column one is a, um, is a key. I did this change again, so this is the key. Uh, this isn't, no, 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 this is not, no, this is the wrong one. Import columns from table. We go file, import network from file, right? Then we select the network that we want. So again, sort by date modified, small network, open up. All right, so we enter up in the same window, but now it's saying import network from table. Um, and now we go advanced options. It is separated by space. I don't want to use the first column name. Um, so now it looks like this, right? And now I can say column one is, what is the meaning? And you guys can see that again. I hate that it, so it's a source node, right? So now where you see here that it got this little green dot. So when I click this button here, it gives me an option to select what is the thing that is in this column. So column one contains the source node, column three contains the target node, and then column two contains the, um, not the edge attribute, but it contains the interaction type, right? So now I have source node, interaction type, target node, and now I press okay, right? So now it loaded my network. So now we see that Oscar, we have Oscar, we have water, we have Denny, we have Anna, food and wet, right? So those are the different nodes that I defined. Now, when we go to the style tab, now I can say, based on these attributes, um, let me zoom out a little bit. So based on, for example, the edge attributes, right? Because we have different types of edges. We have an edge, which is called love. We have an edge, which is called is, and we have an edge, which is called hate. So now we go to, on the bottom here, we go to edge. And now I want to say, I want to change the line color um, where's the line color, um, edge arrows to color, color, unselected. All right, so then just do the line type. Um, stroke color, yeah, just do the stroke color. Uh, we can do that. Okay, so the line type. So I now want to say um, mapping value. All right, so we have the default value, then we have the mapping, so we're going to change the mapping. Um, so why is color unselected? That's so weird. Okay, so but in if we go to the line type, we say go to the mapping. What mapping do I want to do? Well, I want to take the interaction column and then the mapping that I want to do is a discrete mapping, right? Which means that now I get the option to set the different line types for hate, is, and love. So let's do that. So let's make hate um, like a contiguous arrow thingy. Let's make is a dots, and then let's make loves um, an equal dash, right? So now you see that based on the type of the edge, it starts doing the lines differently. So you cannot, so it's not only the lines that you can do, that you can change, but also things like labels and if it has a label, right? So if I want to map the label onto the thing, then I say again, so what do I want to do? Well, I click mapping 
and then I say take the column which is called interaction the mapping type is just pass through right so now what it does it takes the label and passes it through to the uh, it takes the the name of the edge and it passes it through as the label of the edge so now you can see that it says is loves 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 and hates right and this is how you can structure your networks of course we can also add different attributes right so that's the the step that i did wrong at the beginning so now for example we can add attributes to each of the nodes right so here we have a node which is water here we have a node which is called oscar right so if we go back to notepad plus plus so let me just hide these networks for a minute and we say we make a new file right and now we say oscar um, is a animal right um, denny is a human um, anna is also a human right so now for every every edge um, or so for every node right so it's node edge node source interaction target so now i have to say something like food which is of type um, organic or something like that right so I, I can just annotate for everything um, nobody talks about hoop yeah that's true <laughs> we, i didn't put the fish in right like let's keep the network a little bit um, so water is not organic but this is a, uh, a fluid right now when i save this i can now save this as node.attribute right so i'm just making a new file saving it as a node.attribute file now when i go back to cytoscape right so when i go back to cytoscape <laughs> Denny Cyborg, yeah, you could do something like that as well, right? But you can you can define all of these terms and all of these terms Cytoscape can use, right? But now what I can say is I can now go to file, I can go to import, I say table from a file, right? And now I select the new table that we have. Um, so I just have this node attribute table, right? And now I can say again, advanced options, I say do it by space. Um, the first is not the column name so now I can say so the first column I can now say this is the key right and here we say okay so where to input to the network collection no table columns right so it's a no table columns and it's not edges because I want to for each node I want now want to add a property right so the property that I want to add is that I want to say that Oscar is an animal Danny is a human Anna is a human food is organic and water is a fluid Right, so now when I say OK, then now when I click on water, it now has this column 2, which says that, oh, water is a fluid. When I click on Oscar, then it says, oh, Oscar is an animal. Um, Anna is a human and food is organic. Right, so now I can go to the node attributes and now I can use these just imported attributes to change the node. Right, if I want to, for example, take the fill color and I want to change the fill color, I can say, well, which column do I want to take? Well, it's called column two because I didn't give it a name. I can say the mapping type is again discrete, right? Because I don't want to pass it through, but I want to for each, each discrete element in the column, I now want to select the color. So I can say, well, all of the animals that I have, um, I want to mapping value. So I just want to say rainbow colors, right? So now it assigned a color to each of the things which have an attribute, right? So now all of the humans are colored purple, all of the organic substances are called red, and all of the animals are called, are colored green, right? And of course, wet here, right? It, I, it didn't have an option in column number two. So it doesn't get a, it just gets the default value. So this is how you can build up your own really nice, really colorful networks um, using Cytoscape. And that's the thing that Cytoscape really excels at, right? And this is just like a little bit of basic introduction. Hey, you have many default styles where you can say, oh, I want to have like a relatively fancy gradient looking one, or I want to have like a minimal network layout. Um, but hey, the nice thing is, is that even using uh, these, these standard layouts, right, you can still um, color them the way that you want right so here if I have this network which now looks like this right and it's relatively fancy and even moving yeah, but again I can say if I want to change the fill color of the nodes right so the nodes are the round things I can say do a mapping use column 2 
um, the mapping type is uh, discrete and then I'm just going to say um, do some rainbow colors in there and then it will start coloring each of these nice nodes with the colors and I can even change the colors right so I can just change the, the, the gray color to be anything that I want um, so I can just say edit and select something else so it's a, it's a really nifty tool to visualize networks any type of network and you can come up with the network just remember that you have nodes and edges so the nodes are these little bubbles here the edges are the things that connect two nodes which is kind of the interaction so it's object interaction other object and then you can make two additional files one which for every node gives it additional properties like we just did saying that Oscar is an animal or Danny is a human however we can also do the same thing for the edges right so we can say that well um, loves has certain properties or hates has certain properties good I've been talking for an hour um, so with this I am going to consider the cytoscape part done and the R assignments is something that we will leave for next week so unless people really really want me to do the R assignments as well but I think that we should start the lecture um, by now since I've been mucking around too long in Cytoscape altogether but first but first of course we are going to have a little break so anyone watching here um, on YouTube or if you're watching it on Twitch back later um, I will see you guys in around five to ten minutes the first um, let me go back to the overview slide so the first break that we have will be animated gifs of pigs so I will stop the recording so if you're watching this on YouTube see you later if you're watching this on Twitch see you later